into order? Okay. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, I, did you get the, the uh, agenda that I emailed? Okay. I, yeah. I didn't see it attached to the meeting notice, so I sent it to everybody. Um, not, you know, not, a, not a complicated agenda. Um, calling the meeting to order at exactly four o'clock, I guess. Um, old business. Um, the purpose of this meeting is largely to try to prioritize what need, may need to be done with the uh, remaining funds that we have available. And Joyce, I think you told me at one point, I'm looking at the budget here and I don't know if there have been other things that have been added since then, because I know that you had, um, you know, for example, the furnace people in there for annual maintenance. Do you have a sense of what we have remaining in uh, maintenance and repairs? Um, actually, it's about $3,200. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, because $4,000. Uh, I, I have something that you sent me a while back, but the columns aren't, aren't um, labeled. And I'm assuming that the second column, the first column is what's been spent. Correct. Yep. And the second column is the budget. Correct. So... Um, maybe there's a large update then because in the what's been spent, there was 4,000 for maintenance and 4,000 for repairs. And I know that the balance of two brothers came out of that, what wasn't covered by the Emily Hobson fund. Correct. Uh, I, I apologize. You're correct. I was just looking at the maintenance line. There is also 4,000 in repairs as well. All right. Apologize. So do you know what's available still? The full 4,000. The full 4,000 in repairs? Correct. Okay. And, and how much in maintenance? Uh, $3,200. 3,200. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, so that's 7,200. Uh, and some of that will have to be held in abeyance for emergencies. Um, I was there today and I told Joyce earlier that there wasn't any heat in the building. So um, <clears throat> were you able to get somebody to come and look at that? Yeah, it just needed to be reset. It doesn't reset itself? No. no. <laughs> so how does that work? Because that seems quite a danger if there's somebody in the building that turns the heat up, then turns it down. And in fact, what they're doing is turning it off and it won't go on again. Is there something that can well, be done to? When I went, our office was in there, um, we would always turn it way down. It never went off. I think what Joyce is saying, it's uh, the, the furnace must have gone off with a power outage or something made right. it go off. Cause I don't remember that furnace ever having to be manually reset all the time. Right. Um, was there a power outage recently? I don't even know if that would do it. I just, that, that sounds very strange to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, Joyce, can you talk to the furnace people and see if there way, there's a way to have a, you know, to solve the problem without risk to, because I know the refrigerator was all pulled out in the kitchen and there's a sign on the door that says, you know, make sure you don't turn the heat down too much because of frozen pipes. But there was right. no, okay. yeah. That's uh, always I, been the case, but, but I just, I don't ever remember there being an issue with it constantly having to be reset. It's an ancient thermostat. Yeah. Um, That's so, probably a furnace issue than it is a thermostat issue. Yeah, right. it's not a thermostat right. issue because the right. thermostats were set to 60. So and you, I, there right. was no, and I and I boosted the one in the living room up to seventy and opened the door to the basement to see if I could hear the furnace go on and it didn't go on at all. Yeah, it just the furnace needs to be reset. Yeah, yeah. but that but doesn't that, happen all the time, is what I'm saying. That's that's an unusual occurrence. 
Okay. But yeah, if nobody's in the building, then that's an issue. It's a real issue. So if they can look at it and try to see if, if that problem can be solved so it doesn't occur. Well, how much is the building being used, if at all, these days? Well, it's, um, I mean, there are still pipes that are- That's my point. Should we drain the pipes uh, for the winter? I don't know how much, you know, it's still the the office that used to be yours, Marge, is still being rented to um, the uh, chamber. Chamber. Okay, well, that's what I was asking. In and out, they will probably want to have a bathroom available. Okay, too. well, that's that was my question. Is it still being used? So if they're still yeah. using it, we can't drain the pipes. Yeah. Uh huh. Where does that rental money go then? <sighs> well, the way the town seems to act toward income it never goes against the budget okay. which that it should be applied to which has always been a problem to me i mean for example to the kent center school the income that comes in from out of town children from tuition doesn't go to the school budget it goes into a general fund the same is true of parts and rec, parks and rec when there are fees charged for programs or tennis court permits and things, doesn't go to parts, parks and rec, it goes into some general fund. So you can't ever figure but out. Add up his income revenue and have it designated in your budget for the next year. Yeah, the, I would like to see that happen, but. Yeah. Um, but you can have the uh, furnace guy call a low temp alarm and put it to a phone number too. Mm -hmm. So if temperature drops in the building, somebody can get a phone call. Oh, that's a, that's a good alert system. Yeah, yeah, until you're on the receiving end of that in the middle of the night, which I often was with seven hours. And I'd have yeah. to go down and put my thumb on the, it was, oh God, hated that. Well, at least seven hours is not too far from where you live, but in the middle Still, of the night. Still, at two o'clock in the morning, long. doesn't matter where it is. But uh, anyway, we're getting, getting okay. sidetracked, okay. so. All right, um, so with $7,200, I, I have, walked around the building and inside and outside lately. I took some pictures today, but I don't know how to show you pictures on the screen at a Zoom meeting. But um, there, and nothing's gonna get done before winter. But there are things that we could really protect with a little bit of paint, especially. There are sills that need to be replaced, door sills. There are a couple of window sills that are in bad shape, but most of what needs to be done is just protecting what we have. Um, so I'd like to, you know, I'd like to prioritize that. I also met with coffee cleaners today and I don't have their quote yet, but um, they have said that you know, if the building's not going to be used in winter, are there, you're not having a holiday party there for the no. historical society now. No, this year. Yeah. Um, so uh, it would do, it would go a long way to have the at least the one wall with all the staining in the living room painted, and the railings to the stairs outside are missing paint. The snow will sit on them all winter, unless there's a warm enough day for somebody who wants to paint it. We do have paint. The, the roofing contractor left most of a gallon of paint uh, matching the siding, um, but I don't suppose there's anybody available. One of the things I wanted to ask you, Joyce, is about whether, and some of this came up in our my discussion today with coffee cleaners, is there anybody on the town crew that ever does maintenance work on the buildings that belong to the town, town hall or the community house or, or most, is most everything work. farmed out to outside contractors? Most work is we have contractors come in. So for example, when the windows need to be cleaned at town hall, you call a window cleaner? Correct. Okay, all right. Because that's that's a separate line item that coffee cleaners does that and, and they'll let me know. But the windows, I locked up the building and I went to take a picture through the window of the staining on the wall in the living room. 
and the window was so dirty, I had to clean it off with my hand in order to take a picture. I think that would make yes. a huge difference. But the, the one thing that I was interested in getting them in to do is to get rid of the musty odors in the building. They, ha they have a process that's, you know, ozone or CO2, I don't know what it is, but it's something that sort of neutralizes the air. And they said they could do that, that if we are not planning to use the building in the winter, that, um, you know, we could wait till spring, open everything up for two or three days mm -hmm. and, you know, try to freshen it up. And then they could come in after that. They are going to give a quote for cleaning all the horizontal surfaces, including washing the floors, which are kind of grody. Uh, in the upstairs room, there's some debris from animals that got in before they had the cornice uh, molding fixed adjacent on the outside. Um, but they said basically, if we only wanted to clean the ground floor so that it would make the building usable and rentable, um, that that would probably be about $1,500, not including window washing, which would be a separate item. But they said they're heavily booked in the spring in May and June, April and May uh, with people who, you know, want to freshen up their, their vacation houses, ongoing clients. So we would need to decide what we want to do and make a commitment uh, and get on their schedule for late March or something. Um, so we'll see when that comes in, how much that is. But um, I'd like to try to see what it would cost. Uh, Mar Marge, do you know if the carpenters that, I can't remember their names, that have done the window work for us before that are- Rick so and good? Colin Gallagher. Yeah, the Gallaghers. Uh, do you know if they do any painting? I don't know. And I, I know that, that Rick, Glenn, have you had a chance to get into the Swift House and look at it at all or? Good, yes. okay. Yep. Um, Rick, who was the one who really did, started out doing a lot of the good work, had a mild stroke. Mm -hmm. And his son, Colin, is doing the work. And last I heard, Rick is still not totally back up to snuff. I'm doubting that they do any painting, but I can check and see. Well, I, I don't know if when they did the repairs to the windows in the front, the ones that we were able to squeeze into last year's budget, if they, um, you know, if they painted what they repaired. Because some of them, there are sills, for example, that they felt could be repaired instead of replaced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in order to repair them, you know, they have to repair them with Bondo or some product, epoxy product that's wood okay. filler, that's impervious to weather. And then after that, it needs to be painted. And I didn't know if they did the whole job. All right, I'll see if I can get in touch with Colin. Okay. They're not going to be able to, I mean, we, we don't have enough money in the budget to get somebody to paint the whole building. Yeah. But if the areas, I mean, I took photographs of specific areas, there's a corner board and the, you know, by the secondary entrance in the front, um, by the corner of the porch that's been patched and, you know, that could have, I mean, there are places where you could just put on um, specific areas where you could mm -hmm. paint with matching paint and it would mm -hmm. help protect the building and most especially around some of the windows. Okay. Um, is there anything else? Um, well, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, which isn't repairs or maintenance really, but um, I, I it would be good if we could get on the list for hook up to the town sewer because they're they're about to probably have some increases they and they're limited in what they can take on now and the sooner we get our names for this building on the list the better off we'll be i think um 
uh, and that it, was we got that a, we got the quote from Bill Gobble for. Yeah, for thirty five hundred, I think it yeah. was, okay. including if they had to fill the septic tank that's mm -hmm. there now. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, so I don't, uh, Joyce, do you have any idea what the process is for, for that? Uh, we need to talk to the sewer commission and then they have their engineer okay our project and there's a set fee for that. So we'd have to get on the sewer commission's agenda. Okay, and we have to get clearance from the um, select board before we do that. And we can't just go ahead and do it. Um, okay. Um, that's something that might go in next year's budget. Um, we need to start working on the budget too. Yes, we do. Does mm -hmm. most of already getting ready to start submitting all their budget information right now? Right. Um, uh, so I'd like to propose that we put that into next year's budget um, because I don't think we'll have the money to do it this year. And it's a process that takes time too. Um, I don't know if that, which which one of the gobbles was it, um, Marge, that you Bill. talked to? Bill. Uh, do you want to get back and talk to them and see if he might be available to do that and if the same money would hold? Well, I'd need a time frame because he's, yeah. as everybody knows, just he's yeah. so busy. But it would it would be well if it's a next year's budget, it would be um, after July. Yeah, it would be after July. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will forward the photographs that I took um, to, to all of you. And I, can you think of anybody who does, you know, who would do random painting? The people we talked to before were extremely expensive. They gave us a proposal to do the entire building. I don't think that's in the cards right away. No, I don't know. Um, Is water in the toilet still running? Uh, the, in the in the first floor bathroom, yes, the water is still running. That needs to be taken care of too, then, or turned off. Oh no, 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 no! You mean running on? No, uh, yeah. Doris got some of the plumber there. Good. Okay. Yeah, and that's taken care of, right, Joyce? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I thought you meant is it operative yeah um can you think of anything else that i mean there's some things i'd like to i would like to pursue um uh i mean most of all i'd really like a sense from the new board of selectmen i'd like them to read the report that we turned in last february that didn't get a response, yay or nay, or any indication of support or lack of support, except from Chris, who was one of the authors. Um, because, you know, the whole focus of what we were empowered to do was to try to determine what the urgent needs of the building were, and then to make a recommendation to the selectmen for what should happen to this building and our report, which I can send that to you, Glenn. Um, and I'll, I'm going to send it to Jean again because she didn't opine on it a year ago. I, I um, have a copy of it. So uh, no problem. I read it today. Oh, you do. Oh, good. All right. Well, you know, the, I mean, having talked to Chris and the real estate business and a couple other people too, it's not a very saleable building. So to sell it wouldn't bring much in for the town. 
next to a gas station. It has a veterans monument and what used to be the yard. There's therefore not much yard. It's for you know family occupancy. Um, it has uh, and there's there's plenty of office space available in town. So it's not really likely that somebody would buy the whole building uh, for commercial use. It would take a lot of work to turn it into offices. So our recommendation was <clears throat> that there are a lot of potential uses as a town owned building going forward, if it could be fixed up enough to make it usable. And one of the things that I think would help that a lot is if all of us fill out the ARPA survey, we're getting now to new business. If we filled out the ARPA sur survey, I think both of the rentable buildings for the town, both the community house and Swift house should absolutely be wired for Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and for some technology so that uh, people in an emergency, I mean, one of the things that happened to us during COVID times was that, you know, we had this terrible heat wave in August last year when there was no power and nobody had air conditioning and you know, is Joyce, do you know if there's a generator at um, the community house? There is not. There is not. So that's something that, you know, either one or both of the buildings, if they, if they had, and there's a generator only at town hall. That's correct. So town hall was the only place that people could go to for all those days and days when the heat was insufferable and nobody had power unless they had a generator. There, there is a generator at the um, senior center as well. And that was open to the public as well. Okay, all right. <clears throat> um, I wonder if that's big enough to also serve Swift House, which is adjacent to it, but likely not, I don't know. What um, is the ARPA survey and where do we get our access to that? The the ARPA survey is, um, there are copies of it as you just walk into town hall on that bench there. Okay. There's the card, this is the card. It looks like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's a card and then you can do it online or you can pick up the survey and fill it out. Okay. Um, how do you find it online? It's for the eight hundred thousand dollars in federal COVID relief funds. Oh, look! Don't don't. It's on the town website, it. Marge. What's yep. that? On the town website. Okay. Okay. And they're asking for input from the public about um, how the eight hundred thousand dollars in funds. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I think I did do that. I just right. didn't recognize the name. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, I, I think that if the town owned buildings were made usable, you know, with Wi-Fi and a generator, that they could serve an emergency um, uh, purposes. And th that would be really a huge benefit to the town. People I also think that the town really needs to do a better job of, of and I know it's probably a matter of staff timing, but of, of marketing both buildings because they're both great buildings. Yeah. You know, we get this one fixed up and the community house is great. There could be more money coming in if more people knew that they could rent them. Yeah, I, I mean, most people in town have no idea. Well, first of all, they don't even know that Swift House belongs to the town. They think it belongs to the Historical Society. Right. I get that all and the time. Why know. haven't you fixed that up? <laughs> right, and they don't know that it's rentable. Right. Whereas right. in the past, it was rented for all sorts of things from yeah. small personal And parties. people enjoyed it. I was, you know, I worked in there all the time, three days a week. And, and there were always groups that were renting it and they enjoyed it. But I think it just has fallen off the radar. And if we're good, the town's going to be putting money into it. And if we could have rental income coming through better advertising or better publicity, um, and then hopefully, yeah, that money going into at least some of it into the maintenance yeah, kitty for the house. Um, just my humble opinion. Yeah, well, I, I think that, you know, with a modest expenditure of funds, 
and we had a budget in the proposal that we or in the report that we provided to the town about how it could be substantially improved to make the space more usable which by opening up some walls and moving the kitchen from where it is to where the pantry is and and insulating under the floor in the back room so that that is a heated space in winter um and you know so maybe as we work on the budget for next year we put could put something in the budget for the preparation of plans and estimates for improvements and then it would need to go to you know some other funding source um does anybody know if there have, have has ever been any success in raising private funds for civic purposes in Kent. I know it's uh, tax deductible if they go to something that's for civic use, but Ooh. I don't know of any incidents where that's ever happened in Kent. The fire department tried for their new building and it didn't work. No? Nope. I mean, a lot of people make contributions to the volunteer fire department but, no, but you mean had for a, major, a drive for major gifts yep for the building in the beginning when they decided they were going to ask to see if they could get donors to donate money for the new fire department it was you know oh. didn't didn't happen interesting well the the other thing that you know we should all be thinking about in terms of what we might do, what we might recommend is the use of the upstairs space that we didn't focus on very much in our proposal because we we're trying to make the ground floor more usable. But there are two potential uses of upstairs. One would be um, to have, you know, sort of a workspace where people who you know, find it difficult to work at home because they have small children or they don't have the space or whatever they could come and there would be, you know, some basic copy machine and what it facts or whatever. And um, they could have a working cubicle um, with a little kitchenette up there. Um, the other uh, use would be to restore it as a rental apartment and there's such a shortage of rental space in town that you know that i'm sure it would be very sought after that would require um an, a separate access mm -hmm. um which we've talked about with the building department um but it's not impossible at all right and it's quite a it's quite a nice space. The mm -hmm. large major room is very full of light mm -hmm. and it's walkable to any place in town. So um, we can look at that as time goes by. Um, uh, is there anybody who would like to work? What is the, uh, Joyce, can you tell us what the time frame is for the budget? Um, Generally, we start submitting budget requests mid to late January, and then we go department by department. By end of March, beginning of April, it'll be pretty much wrapped up. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, January, and it goes to, to the Board of Finance when? Uh, like April. April. Yeah, April. Because it has to be ready for the May meeting. Tell me. Okay. Is there anybody who'd like to work on that with me? I will. Okay. All right. And in getting working on maybe getting some walking through with the uh, building inspector and the fire marshal to find out what we would need to do for the apartment upstairs. Excellent. Um, mm -hmm maybe talking to the chamber, if they would be willing to maybe move upstairs so we could do that large room. I don't, yeah, I don't think they'll want to do that because well, I, 
what they're using it for mostly is storage and they're right. not going to want to haul stuff up and down those steep stairs you um, could really get that lower downstairs out yeah but one it's, of the things that oh. i've thought about and you know ed you could probably answer this i there's the what is it called now? The building out behind. It's the um, ambulance barn. The old ambulance barn, yeah. The old ambulance barn. I don't, I am assuming the old ambulance barn belongs to the town. Mm -hmm. No, the fire department. The fire department, okay. It belongs to the fire department? The building home is by the fire department and the land is on the town. The town owns the land. And uh, But does the fire department, I know it's, some of the space is used for training, but you don't use it as an ambulance barn anymore. Correct, not at this time, but there is talk maybe renovating it. Um, if some of that were made available to the town, I mean, it, it, it changed hands entirely. And was it built by the fire department or was it built by the town? That was part of old grain storage building that used to be over yes. near the tracks and it got right. movement go back to that spot right. you're breaking up ed i can't hear it, it there's got, a brain, it was it was over near the railroad tracks over behind the kent market area uh-huh was moved there and so it was moved by the fire department onto I, that property might have been but i'm not sure who moved no, it no i i i I think it predated that. I think it might have been even moved by the Templeton family when right. it was yep. part of the farm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're certain that it belongs to the fire department, though. I know they have use of it. Yep. So that, anyway, so, well, because I was thinking if not all of that is in use, that, you know, maybe the chamber could use part of that for storage because it would be so much more accessible even than where things are stored now. And then they could, you know, they could continue to use Swift House for office space, but the way it is now, they don't, they can't even have a meeting there because they have so much stuff stored. Yeah, it's all over the place in there. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. And um, the garden has stuff in there too, correct? The what? Garden club. The garden club has a set Just of shelves, not much, but yeah, but not, not much. Yeah. But that right. needs to be cleaned up. And I mean, there's some junk in that room that who knows who, who it belongs to. That, and there's Emily Hobson stuff and yeah, all, all of her photographs of oh, that's right, a cabinet trip. full of slides and yeah, we have yeah, to get those also, out of there. And the cupboards yeah. in the back room, there are you know, playing cards and games and jigsaw puzzles. And if anybody needs jigsaw puzzles. They should probably just go to the library because they, they do a big business selling puzzles at the library book sale. Oh, okay. Year, but I'll, I'll get Emily's slides out of that closet by the fireplace. I totally forgot about those. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And the, the uh, kitchen is now sort of discombobulated, presumably because of the the water. What what happened there, Joyce? Was there a flood? Not the that I'm aware of. The refrigerator is pulled way out so that you can't get between the sink and the refrigerator to where the stove is. And I that's weird. And there's a bu bucket and mops there. And I wondered if there was a recent incident in the kitchen. Not to my knowledge. I don't know. I don't know who pulled the refrigerator out or why. I will look into it. Okay. Yeah, it's been that way a long time, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, Ed, I am I am leaving for California next right. week, and I'll be available by phone and Zoom and FaceTime and all those those things. But um, when I get back, which will probably be the end of January. I'd love to walk through upstairs with a building inspector with you and anybody else on the committee who's interested and see what we, you know, make some inquiries about what might be able to be done and what, what that would involve so that we could update our recommendation mm -hmm. to the board of selectmen mm -hmm. and, and consider options. Those, yep. 
uh, it's a good building, needs attention. I think that it's potentially rentable. It's a good mm -hmm. size. You know, there are mm -hmm. caterers who have said, yeah, we could really use a place this size for, yeah. for people that don't want to entertain at home or don't have the space to entertain at home. And so centrally located. Anyway, um, so Ed, you'll work with me on the budget. We will pass that by everybody, of course. Um, please look at the ARPA survey and make any recommendations that you could about, you know, the the use of of buildings that already belong to the town um, in emergency circumstances. I mean, we're lucky that there's a vaccination site, for example, at the barns. But if that weren't available, and it may not be available at another time, you know, Swift House could be a perfect place to have, or for people to um, to gather when they uh, when they don't have other emergency space. Um, Anything else that we should be taking up now? Um, Marge, you're gonna talk to Bill Gavel. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I just and, say one thing, um, uh, uh, Sarah, just uh, she wanted me to mention uh, that uh, the chamber uh, is hoping to use the space in January for I think some meetings. Uh, oh, good. Starting in the new year, so that was she. That's what she uh, she said to me, and then she asked if there was Wi-Fi, and I think you said there is not Wi-Fi there. Right, there is not, and there really has to be Wi-Fi. I mean, we've had this problem also, and I'm sure you've had this problem, Joyce, in trying to rent the community house. There's nothing there, you know. There's, it has a stage, but it doesn't have any lighting. It doesn't have any sound. Doesn't have any projection. Doesn't have even have Wi-Fi, so you couldn't you know, bring in a screen to, to, you know, project something yeah. from internet. Yep. Um, and I there is, and, and according to Gene uh, Speck, there are funds available specifically for some of that use for, for the community house. See if it could be done. Yeah. Yeah. So and then we need to work on with the town also the liability insurance situation. That was the other issue that I have on my list. Oh, because yeah. it costs one hundred and fifty dollars for liability insurance, and then you rent the place for fifty. Uh, there are a lot of people aren't going to have a little birthday party or something, a little meeting in there if it's going to cost them two hundred dollars right in the very beginning for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, I I will. I'm going to talk to the insurance broker. Right. Uh, because. That doesn't, that doesn't seem rational. You know, if you're renting a place, it, in my experience, I've spent some years of my life doing events for not-for-profit organizations. And most places, if you're serving liquor, you have to have insurance coverage and you have to have a licensed bartender to do that. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the town already has liability insurance on all its buildings. And if somebody trips on their way into Swift House, they're not going to sue the people who are renting it. They're going to sue the people that own the building. Right. So I'm saying that's what we need to look into. That's all. That's something we need it, to put. It seems like double insurance <clears throat> that shouldn't be necessary. Uh, so, Ed, do you want to? Do you want to try out? I mean, I can try to look into that too, but. Yeah, we can all work on that together. Um, like I said, we're not going to be renting it that much in the winter anyway, but, um, right. but that's something we, we would like to work and sit down with the town and see what uh -huh. we can maybe try to work it out and get it changed. Uh -huh. Well, if, if, uh, if Sarah is thinking about using Swift House in January for the, this is not the library, it's for the chamber. Yes. Okay. Um, then we should, I should probably 
try to speed up coffee cleaners and at least get it smelling good and you know freshened up so i'll i'll let you all know when i have that quote from them what we can share it um and that can be part of the repairs and maintenance because it, ne it needs to be done anyway okay um anything else or is that it for today no it's a start anyway yeah okay good. good but budget is something we really need to work on a budget a capital plan and for long term um i have already in the capital plan now i guess it will be four years not five years to replace the antique furnace with right. a dual a dual system that provides heat and air conditioning. Right, but I mean we'll have to be figuring for the next year out at it's this point. Yeah. So, and that usually choice I believe has to be in by the end of December, correct? What the budget? The capital, capital yeah. Budget? Capital budget. I wish I'd known that because. Um, so we can put something together before then. Yeah. Something. Yep. Okay. All I mean, right. it, even could... getting someone there to give us some prices on maybe the concrete, pouring the concrete floor in the basement and the um, underneath that other building. Well, the the basement has a concrete floor. Right. But That's the true. the um, the earth uh, underneath the um, the back room. Right, but close to the senior center, that needs like a rat slab. Yep, and it also needs foam insulation on the top, on which which would be under the floor of the room because there's no insulation there at all. That's a that can be worked on as as a good capital plan too. So yeah, I I wonder if it could. I mean, I, I would hate to have to wait five years for that. You don't put it in and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you're better. If you raise the money and can do it, that'd be terrific. But if you yeah. don't raise the money, then at least it's in the capital plan so you can see it. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think that's good. Okay. I, uh, we can also look at the proposed budget in the back of the uh, report that we did last year um, and see what's in there for improvements and try to get some of that into the capital plan. Do you, you have a copy of that, Ed? I don't think I do. I'll forward it to you. What is your email? It's edmatson1 at aol.com because my town email didn't work on this one for some one at aol.com is okay. the one use for now okay. all right um okay all right um thank you all have a nice evening thank, thank you. you thank you take care okay right. i i Next time I talk to you, we'll have to find a time that works with the West Coast, I guess. Okay, sounds good. Figure it out. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Glenn, for joining us. Thank you. Nice happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.